Lately, I've been getting a lot of questions about Prometheus monitoring. How do I get Prometheus to scrape my custom applications metrics? Or how do I get Prometheus to scrape my endpoint? Well, that is simple. Today, we take a look at exactly that. This is a video on service monitors. Service monitors is a Kubernetes object introduced by the Prometheus operator. The Prometheus operator uses Kubernetes custom resources to simplify the deployment and configuration of Prometheus, Alert Manager, and other related monitoring components. When you use the Prometheus operator, you can easily deploy Prometheus instances, configure scrape targets, that scrape your pods or custom metric endpoints. Service monitors is what helps us set up these scrape targets. One Prometheus can select many service monitors. Now service monitors tells Prometheus exactly what to scrape. So instead of us writing a Prometheus configuration file that has all the endpoints we want to scrape and manually configuring Prometheus, we simply write a YAML file with the intent. This YAML file is called a service monitor. Let's say we have a deployment with two pods. Our pods have metrics endpoints. We expose traffic to our pods using a Kubernetes service. Now to get Prometheus to scrape the service, we need to deploy a service monitor. Prometheus needs to have a service monitor selector to discover the service monitor. The service monitor needs a selector to select our application's Kubernetes service. Only then will scrape targets appear in the Prometheus dashboard. So it is as simple as that, but with all the simplicity, it is still very easy to configure these things incorrectly. And it looks like many people are making mistakes. Couple of things that you need to understand. The first thing is you need a Prometheus instance. Prometheus needs to be configured correctly to select the service monitors. The service monitors need to exist and they need to be in the right namespace where Prometheus is looking. If you're using label selectors, you need to make sure the labels exist on the service monitors. If you're telling Prometheus to select service monitors with a specific label, those service monitors don't have the label, Prometheus will not select them. Now number two, the same thing goes for service monitors. A service monitor needs to select a Kubernetes service to scrape. That means that selector has to have the right labels and look in the right namespace. If your Kubernetes service is missing these labels or is in a different namespace, the service monitor won't be able to select it. Now with all that said, I'm going to run you through a practical example. We're going to create a Kubernetes cluster. We're going to deploy the Prometheus operator, which will allow us to deploy a Prometheus. Then we're going to deploy an example app and we're going to configure Prometheus to scrape the example app using a service monitor. All of that in this video. But before that, I've got a quick word from our sponsor who made this video possible. Now, when you hear of Kubernetes, you most likely heard of YAML files. And when you think of YAML files, you think hundreds of lines, thousands of files, complex helm charts, complex customized templates. And two things come to mind here, human error and misconfiguration. Now, thankfully, there is a free and magical open source utility that helps us solve these challenges, and it's called Detree. Detree is a tiny command line app that helps us test our YAML files. It checks our YAML for broken YAML syntax, for valid Kubernetes schema, and also helps enforce and checks policies, and also helps manage these policies from a dashboard. You can even run Detree in your GitHub action pipeline and prevent your precious pipeline from running if any YAML misconfiguration or policy issues are detected as the tree supports multiple CI CD workflows. The tree also ships in the form of a Kubernetes webhook which can run the tree every time resources are applied to your cluster. This means the tree can run at every stage of our software delivery workflow. It can run checks locally in our CI pipeline during deployments and also run against resources that are already deployed end to end. The tree also supports Helm, has native customized support support, lots of official integrations, as well as community plugins like VS Code. This video is proudly sponsored by Detree. Check out the link down below in the description for a full Detree tutorial. Now without further ado, back to my service monitors.
So if we take a look at my GitHub repo, I have a Kubernetes folder. And in the Kubernetes folder, if we look down, we have a service monitors folder with a readme. And in this readme, we talk about our introduction to service monitors. This will talk about monitoring in Kubernetes, creating a cluster, setting up the Prometheus operator, accessing the Prometheus dashboards, creating a new Prometheus instance, deploying a service monitor to monitor an example app that we're going to deploy as well. Now, in order to understand all of this, I would highly recommend to check out my video on how to monitor Kubernetes in 2022. In that video, we create a Kubernetes cluster and we walk through all the steps of the Prometheus operator and getting all the monitoring components installed. Now, in my introduction to service monitor, I have a direct link to that video, which I highly recommend you watch before continuing with this one. This will ensure you have the right monitoring components in place for monitoring the right version of Kubernetes. Now, in that monitoring video, we rely on a project called the Prometheus Operator, which forms the foundation of our Kubernetes monitoring. To deploy the Prometheus Operator and all the monitoring components, we rely on the Kube Prometheus stack. And this stack will deploy the Prometheus Operator and everything you need to monitor a Kubernetes cluster. Be sure to check out the compatibility matrix as well to make sure you deploy the right Prometheus stack for the right version of Kubernetes. So remember to check out the link down below to the source code so you can follow along. So under my GitHub repo, under Kubernetes service monitors, we have the readme. And the first step in the readme is to create a Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to go create a new Kubernetes cluster with a utility called kind. I'm going to say kind create cluster. I'm going to call it monitoring and I'm going to run Kubernetes 1.23. I go ahead and go to the terminal, run that command, and that'll create a lightweight Kubernetes cluster in a Docker container we can use for testing. And after waiting a couple of seconds, if I do kubectl get nodes, we can now see we have a one node Kubernetes Kubernetes cluster up and running. Now the next step is to deploy Kube Prometheus to our cluster, the right version for Kubernetes 1.23. Now in my Kubernetes monitoring guide for 2020, we used Kubernetes 1.23 and we used the release 0.10, which has Kubernetes 1.23 support. And in that guide, what we did is we downloaded all the manifests to our monitoring folder. That is under our GitHub repo, under monitoring, under Prometheus, under Kubernetes. We have the different versions of Kubernetes that we've done guides on. If you go into the 1.23 folder, you'll see a readme following the guide for that video. And in this manifest folder, we've downloaded all the YAML files for that guide. To get the manifests for your cluster, simply go to the compatibility matrix, select the right version, which will take you to the right tag. You can go to the manifest directory, and these are all the manifests you're going to need. Now, since I've already downloaded this to make it simple, I'm just going to run two kubectl commands. The first one is to create the manifest setup directory. So all the YAML files under the setup directory, I'm going to go ahead and run that. And if we take a look at the setup directory, that'll just deploy all the custom resource definitions and the monitoring namespace. And then we'll go ahead and run the kubectl create command for the remaining manifests. Go ahead and paste that to the terminal and that'll deploy the Prometheus operator stack. You can also deploy the kube Prometheus stack using the Helm chart. If you're stuck and you simply need more information on the kube Prometheus stack, be sure to check out the link down below to my Kubernetes 2020 monitoring guide. And now that we've installed the kube Prometheus stack, the next part is to check the install. So we can say kubectl in the monitoring namespace get pods and if we run that that'll show us all the pods for the monitoring stack we've got alert manager we've got things like uh, cube state metrics we've got node exporter we've got a grafana dashboard with pre-populated dashboards as well we've got two prometheus instances which monitors the infrastructure for kubernetes and here's the operator which allows us to deploy prometheus instances and service monitors i can view the pre-built dashboards in grafana by port forwarding to the grafana service on on port 3000. And if I go to localhost 3000, after port forwarding, we can access all the Grafana dashboards. So you can see things like pod memory and CPU usage, and a whole list of pre-built dashboards. We can also access the Prometheus instance that populates all these dashboards by 
port forwarding to the Prometheus service on port 1990. This is important if we want to troubleshoot Prometheus instances when we create service monitors to scrape our custom apps. And if we access the Prometheus instances, we can go to status, we can look at targets, and you can see all the targets that's been configured. Now with the Q Prometheus stack deployed, we have the Prometheus operator in our cluster, which gives us two custom resource definitions. One is called kind service monitor, and the other one is called kind Prometheus. This allows us to define Prometheus instances as YAML files, and it also allows us to configure Prometheus instances and tell it what to scrape with YAML files as a service monitor. So now we can go ahead and create our own Prometheus instances used to monitor our microservices and other services running in the cluster. Let's take a look at that Prometheus under my Kubernetes folder in the service monitors folder. We have a Prometheus.yaml. So in here you can see this is a custom resource definition. API version is monitoring core OS, kind is Prometheus. We can add a bunch of labels. We can decide on the namespace we want to deploy this to. So you can deploy a Prometheus instance in every Teams or department department's namespace, and you can decide how you want to break it up. We're going to run one instance of Prometheus. We give it some resource requests. And if we go down here, this is the important part. Firstly, we run it as a specific service account. That service account has all the permissions to scrape and find service monitors throughout your cluster. The next part is the service monitor namespace selector. You can leave this as open, close, curly brackets to match all namespaces. That means this Prometheus will detect all service monitors and monitor them, which is not what we want. We want the service monitor to select only a specific namespace. So what I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to select only the default namespace by adding this service monitor namespace selector to match labels and match the metadata name default. So this will ensure we can only pick up service monitors from the default namespace. I don't want to blow to this Prometheus with all other metrics. And then we also have a service monitor selector. So within that namespace, how do we find the service monitors? And this one, I'm going to open close bracket. I'm basically going to say match all service monitors. This is the first piece of the puzzle. If you're troubleshooting why your metrics are not going into Prometheus is to make sure Prometheus is actually looking at the right service monitors and the right namespaces. So I'm going to go ahead and create this Prometheus instance by applying that Prometheus YAML file and I'm just going to apply it into the monitoring namespace so I keep all my Prometheuses in the same place. I go ahead and run that, that'll create my Prometheus instance. We can then view that instance by looking in the monitoring namespace to get pods and we can see this is our Prometheus instance that's been created. When that Prometheus is up and running, we can port forward to it with the port forward command. So just port forward to that pod on port 1990. And then go to the UI. If we go to targets, we can see it's empty. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to detect service monitors. Now, we find that under status, under service discovery. You can see that page is empty because we don't have any service monitors. So if you have service monitors, but you find this page empty, that means you're Prometheus is misconfigured. Now to get the service discovery part of Prometheus configured, we need to go ahead and deploy a service monitor. And the service monitor is used to tell our Prometheus instance where our application monitoring endpoint is. And we generally want to create one service monitor per microservice. So the next step is to deploy a service monitor. So in my Kubernetes service monitors folder, I have a service monitor.yaml. If we click into that, it's a very small piece of YAML file. So it has kind service monitor. It has a name, so we're going to call example app we want to monitor our example app and we're going to say we want to deploy it to the default namespace because that's where Prometheus is looking the next part of the service monitor is to define where to find the service the most important part here is the selector now service monitor generally selects a Kubernetes service so what we do is we want to match label where a Kubernetes service has a label called app with a key example app so this is a label I'm going to put on my custom application that I want to scrape that's the first part. The second part is we need to make sure we match the ports. So if the service monitor knows which Kubernetes service to scrape, it also needs to know which port to scrape. So for that, we're going to put an endpoint. We give it an interval. So how often we want it to scrape. So you can tune this value, which will increase the cost because the more often you scrape, the more memory Prometheus will consume. So I'm going to leave this as a default of 30 seconds. And I'm going to say, I want to scrape the port, which is called web. So on our example, 
example app will have a Kubernetes service, we need to have a port with the name web and we need to have a label called app example app. So to deploy that service monitor, it's really simple. I'm going to say kubectl apply in the default namespace where all my apps are going to run. I apply that YAML file. I go ahead and run that and we can see it's been created. I can do kubectl get service monitors and we can see the service monitor exists. Now, after applying the service monitor, we want to make sure that our Prometheus is aware of it. So what we want to do is go ahead and port forward to our Prometheus again. Now, notice it may take a couple of seconds for this to populate, but when we port forward, forward to our Prometheus instance and refresh the page, we should see the service discovery being populated with that one service monitor. So this means that our Prometheus instance is correctly configured to pick up the service monitor. But if we take a closer look at the service discovery, there's zero out of one active targets. And if we go to status and go to targets, we see that this page is empty. This means that the service monitor is not able to find a service to scrape or it potentially is misconfigured. So now you understand how Prometheus is configured to scrape and pick up service monitors. The next step is to ensure that the service monitor is able to select the Kubernetes service of our custom application. So the service monitor is sitting there, but it doesn't have a service to scrape because we have not created that. So in my Kubernetes folder under service monitors, I have an example app folder that has a deployment with a pod and a service to expose that pod. Pod. So if I take a look at the deployment.yaml, we can see that this is a very basic standard Kubernetes deployment and it's going to run two replicas and it has my image here, which is a Python application that exposes a slash metrics endpoint. The default path a service monitor will look for is slash metrics. Also notice that these pods are exposing port 5000. If we take a look at the service, because we will need a service to expose traffic of a pod. This is a basic Kubernetes construct. So I create this service called example service. And this is the important part. It has a label on it called app example app. This is the label that the service monitor will look for. Then I have type cluster IP. This could be any type of service. It could be type load balancer. In my case, it's a private service and it has a selector on which pods to select, which is the standard service syntax. Then the second important part other than the label on the service for the service monitor is also the port. So I have a port here, specified protocol TCP. The important part here is the name. I name it as web and this is the name that the service monitor is looking for. I then expose the port as 80 and the target port is 5000, which is the port the pod exposes. So the important part here, when we take a look at the service is to make sure that the service monitor is correctly configured. So what I do is I take the service monitor and I open it side by side. And if we open it side by side, we can see three important pieces of information. One is the namespace. The namespace is a default. So we have to make sure we deploy our Kubernetes service in the default namespace as well. Secondly, we have the port called web, which is what the service monitor would look for. That is defined on the service as port web. And lastly, the selector. The selector defines the label that the service monitor will look for app example app. And if we take a look at the service, we have that label defined as app example app. So all these things tie up. So the last piece of the puzzle is to deploy that example app in the default namespace. So I'm going to do that by saying kubectl apply default name space, apply the example app folder, and that'll go ahead and deploy the two pods as a deployment and the service. So now the service monitor has something to scrape. So we want to wait a few seconds and then port forward back to our Prometheus instance. Now, if we refresh the targets page of the Prometheus dashboard, we can now see that our service monitor has targets and there's zero out of two. It's in an unknown state because the service monitor has just configured Prometheus with these two endpoints and it takes some time for Prometheus to start probing and scraping that metrics for those two pods. So you can see here there's two pods because I'm running two pods behind that service. And if we give it some time and we refresh, you can see the status now up. So if I had a misconfigured service monitor, this page would be empty. If the ports are mismatched or things like that, you'll see a connection refused error in here and you need to resolve that for the metrics to flow through. I can then go to my Prometheus dashboard and I can type Python and we can see all my metrics here are starting to come through. So I hope this video helps give you a fundamental understanding of Kubernetes service monitors and how to configure Prometheus instances to scrape metrics endpoints. Now let me know in the comments below what sort of troubles you're facing when dealing with custom metrics and what sort of video
videos you would like me to cover in the future. And if you like the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and click the bell. And if you want to support the channel even further, be sure to check the Patreon link down below or click the join button to become a YouTube member. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.